2.45 in the glorious morning, we are headed to Pikes Peak Mountain to practice for the Pikes Peak International Hill Climb. We have to be on the mountain early because the race association shuts down the mountain just for the competitors for four to five hours. And so we need to be able to practice and get off the road before 8.30 when it opens to the general public. The practices are for the teams to make lots of adjustments in all categories of the car, from suspension to engine tuning to overall chassis dynamics, and just making sure that the car is safe to race on race day. It's also for the drivers to learn the bumps, the dips, and the turns in the road, because it's different driving the road at 30 miles an hour as opposed to 130 miles an hour. Our goal for practice is just to make sure that the car is running the way that we want it to be running based on the variables that we see on the mountain, uh, temperatures, altitude, and also to make sure that the driver is comfortable and that he's happy with the performance of the car. For practice, we're going to be able to see some great cars. We're going to see a bunch of different types of cars, from open wheel cars to full electric cars, stock cars, and everything in between, including the time attack cars, which our cars fall into. Okay, we're back at Pikes Peak testing. We've uh, done quite a bit to the car since the last time you saw what was happening. We completely gutted the interior, put in the safety equipment, the roll cage, pulled out other components of the interior that weren't necessary. We've also put in a uh, communication system so I'm able to talk to the pits when I'm up on the mountain. You know, removed all the airbags, which is mandatory for a safety reason. Fire extinguisher, which is handheld. You don't have to have a full fire system. Here we are at Pikes Peak practice. We've got the access port rigged up, ready to log every single run we make. Uh, this car is currently running a stage two OTS map with added ignition timing for the 100 octane that we're running. Uh, we're gonna send David up the mountain. Uh, I'm gonna log everything he does. When he comes back down, we'll make changes, uh, reflash it if necessary, and send him on his way. The practice weekend started very, very rainy and wet. Whereas at the start line, it was raining, and by mid-mountain to top mountain, it was snowing. So we've had some extreme weather this year. Um, we've had a tremendous amount of precipitation that's predicted to continue all the way through the summer. So we're anticipating a rainy race in the afternoon if we don't leave early. Um, it's pretty much guaranteed there's going to be water on the road because of the amount of snow that's on Pikes Peak. Well, rain serves as a, as a treacherous impact because it makes things extremely slick. I mean, on race day, you might have some vehicles that might drop a little bit of fluid or something. So with moisture on that, obviously it turns into a really slippery course. Because of the weather, we weren't able to see the data that we would typically like to see on a normal weather day. Uh, David's not able to push the car as hard as he wants, and therefore we don't get to see as much as we normally would, would like to. But on the other hand, we still got to gather good data. So I've run this race for many years and I continue to practice it and take advantage of the private test sessions because number one, I'm in a different car, number two, the surface is different, and three, weather conditions are different this year. So you have to be able to experience what it's going to be like, you know, with your combination of vehicle, road conditions, etc. So, you know, anybody that tests a great deal here, as Roger Penske says, performance springs results. So, you know, as the cop people need to test and tune the car, you know, I need to test and tune my skills and my reflexes and my car interpretation and explain all that. So, got to do it. It's just part of the deal. Right now, I'm just pulling the log off the access port of David's last run. Um, I'll go through it while he goes up on his next run and make any changes when he comes back down again. Uh, nothing really jumps out at me as being overly Excessive, temps are good. Um, car seems very happy. Big things I'm looking for are ignition timing retard. That's these little yellow dips here. This is the sum of all six cylinders, so it's only a negative 1.1. So everything power-wise, I know you didn't really No, it was it, fine. We were trying to scrub these reins in a little okay. bit, okay. and because uh, the track's always bad the first run anyway. Gotcha. So power was fine. I mean, okay. it felt... Nothing, no, nothing. I didn't notice anything. I mean, okay. I never got to run it that hard yesterday because <clears throat> okay. of the rain, so... This run should give a better feel. Okay, I got some good data. It looks good so far. Um, I'm going to go through this while you go up on the next run. Okay. And I'll make changes um, After that. for the third run. Okay. 
So the road on Pikes Peak is also unpredictable because it changes in the way it has bumps and curves and this and that. And that's due to the uh, permafrost below the pavement. So it melts, you know, maybe within a week, obviously by the sun hitting the black tarmac and can actually make the asphalt move up and down. So the bump last week might not be there, but there might be two new ones. So, you know, you need to drive it a lot to truly understand it. And every year it's different. David just finished his second run here, so I just am pulling the data log off of uh, that run. I didn't change anything from the first run. Uh, this run was a little bit more aggressive, so the data should be a little bit better. So after looking at the data from the last two runs, uh, I noticed they could use a little bit more timing. The knock sum corrections are very low, so I try to throw another degree or two in it and see what the time does, the time changes. Other than that, everything looked good. Uh, just gonna let him go up for the third run for the day. Uh, and times. So how'd everything go today? Everything looks good. Uh, the AP data logging worked great. Um, you know, very little timing corrections. Car seems very happy. Driver's very happy. Um, you know, best time today in our class. So things are going very well. Awesome. Yeah. David said the car's running really well. So, you know, I think, uh, I think it's a great calibration for the race. So this after our first day of testing, uh, second day, actually, we uh, were very happy with the car. I mean, the, the Cobb has done a fantastic job tuning it. I was telling the guys when I got down, I said, this is unbelievable that this is a street car because I'm running times that I was running in my race car two years ago. So um, we're, pretty, we're extremely thrilled and we'll just see how it goes from there. We're just taking big little steps all the way to the top and uh, bring it back for the race in a couple weeks. We're very happy with the results from this weekend's practice. The calibration that we tested in Pueblo a few weeks ago performed as we expected, and we only had to make a few minor adjustments like timing changes. There's been a lot of development to get this calibration to work as well as it does. It's been tested all the way from sea level to 14,000 feet, and now all that's left is to run the race.